Hello and welcome to another pen video from me, Penultimate Dave. So I have another pen uh, here, a uh, Visconti pen, in my collection that I wanted to show you. And uh, this is uh, an interesting pen for a number of reasons. And I'll show you that in a little bit. But uh, you can see here the box comes in what was the standard Visconti box. Visconti have recently changed these now. Um, but you'll see here it's called the Moonlight Race Tech Fountain Pen with a Tubular Nib extra fine now people that know me will know that i like broad pens or stubs um, i really do not like extra fine nibs but um, as always with visconti um, their nibs tend to write quite wet and quite wider so this for me actually is quite good so if i unbox that there you'll see it comes in the standard visconti clamshell box um, which obviously they have now changed. Uh, but if I open it up, you'll see the Visconti logo here in the leather or the faux leather. Uh, you'll see Race Tech. Um, let's put that aside. And then you'll see the Visconti brochure. And this is just a standard Visconti brochure where it shows you uh, the Visconti Villa, the factory where they make these pens. Uh, some of the uh, pens being tooled and, and the nibs, um, various heads of state various uh, well-known actors and actresses and ambassadors for the brand uh, some some of the other um, pens for the Davina HRH edition which are very expensive pens along with the Alchemy which also is very expensive uh, you have the Maya, the Christian Bible um, the uh, Taroki Tarots, uh, Istos Arachnus and then you have the more well-known pens which are the Rembrandts, the Davinas, the Michelangelo, and the Homo Sapiens. So this is just a standard brochure, really, that comes with it. And then you actually get this uh, Race Tech card, uh, identity card. So you'll see here that this is a fountain pen or roller. This is the fountain pen. It's an 18 chrome flex touch tubular nib made of palladium. Uh, and um, so this is quite interesting because these um, nibs typically have been called chromium 18 um, so but uh, so the trim is palladium so 18 chrome refers to chromium 18 now chromium it, or chrome is just basically another posh word for steel so it is a steel nib uh, it's a cartridge uh, converter filling system and it's an acrylic uh, uh, but the, the reason why I like this pen and I'll show you this if I zoom in a little bit here number of things really um, that they changed the Visconti bridge clip uh, and it almost looks like a uh, brake disc um, so, so you can actually see holes through uh, the, the clip and I actually I like that in a design I have that in a few of my pens from Visconti now it has a standard spring-loaded clip um, now this is quite rare for Visconti but it actually comes in this uh, more rounded tip on the cap and because it's a race tech pen you, you have this this um, uh, sort of uh, um, checkered flag on the cap band and if I zoom in here you'll be able to see it says race tech and Visconti uh, now the other thing I, I like is this carbon fiber weave uh, and that is quite lovely um, now I'm sure it's not actual carbon fiber maybe, maybe it's just a very thin layer um, but it does it does look like carbon fiber but there's no mention whether or not it is or if it's just a, a carbon fiber pattern um, and the pen uh, tapers up here to the end cap a ring there and there's just nothing on the end cap so this for me is a pen that I really like and if I unscrew the cap here you'll see the uh, the chromium 18 nib um, so this is um, you'll, you'll notice it as I mentioned it is a chrome nib or a steel nib effectively now you do have this little if I can try and Show my finger this little upturn here. It's not a, a Waverly nib, but um, Visconti seem to do these on the chromium nibs. Now, uh, 
you do have a checkered flag here on the section. Now, sadly, they will discolor. Now, I have had some red ink in here, so the, the almost like pink uh, checkered flag that you see there, pink and black, uh, should normally be white and black. Um, and then you have the section here, um, which is a metal one, but it's an hourglass section. And then you have the threads. There's really no step up here. And then you have the body. So if I unscrew the pen, the body, I'll show you. This just has a standard Visconti cartridge converter in there. And it's about half full at the moment. But uh, I, late, more lately, I've actually started to like cartridge converter pens because I can actually fill them up and actually burn through the ink in, in a couple of pages uh, and, and change the ink to a, a different color. Now, the pen, I don't know, it, it's, it's, it's not short, but it, it's likewise, it's not a long pen. Now, you can post... Now, if you post it, it doesn't post that securely. Like, it will wobble a little bit. Um, and it does make the pen very long. So, I don't post this pen. Um, but uh, I just find that the size and the length and the weight is actually quite nice. Uh, I think, to be honest, I would probably prefer if it was a little bit longer. If you have large, larger hands or you hold them more on the threads here, it then does become a little bit short. But uh, for me, I it, it's another pen that I do like. And because of the, the various sort of um, tweaks that Visconti made in this model, I, this is a, the reason why I wanted to get this model. So let me do some uh, size uh, checks. Uh, weight and comparison, and we'll do a writing sample. So the the full length of the pen is around about 147 millimeters, and the cap is around about 69 millimeters. And then if I do a check from the tip of the tines, we're looking around about 128 millimeters. So it's kind of getting towards an oversized pen, but I would say it's probably not quite there. Um, so let's do a, a weight check as well. So in terms of weight, the entire pen inks up. We're looking at just under 36 grams. The cap is just under 14 grams. And then the body inked, we're looking at just under 22 grams. So it's not a bad weight pen. Um, it's actually quite usable. Um, so th for me, this is a pen which I do like, uh, even though it's an extra fine, and I don't use extra fines that often. So let's do a um, pen comparison. So from left to right, we have a Pelican M600 Turquoise White, a Pelican M800 Royal Gold Raden, a Twisby Diamond 580 AL, a Visconti Homo Sapiens London Fog, the Visconti Race Tech Limited Edition, we have the Visconti Homo Sapiens Bronze Age Marzi, we have a Visconti Brunelleschi, we have a Pilot Custom 823 with an FA nib, we have the Armando Simone Club Bologna Extra Arco in brown, and we have a Classic Pens LB5. So let's do a writing sample. So this is the Visconti. Um, I'm just going to call it Race Tech. And it is a Chromium 18 nib. And it is um, a extra fine. Now, the ink that um, I'm using here today is Diamine Matador. As you can see, this is quite an extra fine nib, um, more so for Visconti. Um, but uh, in terms of the line, it puts down it is a, 
an extra fine nib from a Visconti perspective may be uh, a little bit more towards a fine for a regular uh, Western nib. Now, if I try to apply a bit more pressure, you can coax a bit of pressure out and almost get double the line variation here. Uh, but it is a steel nib, um, so you're not going to get a lot out of it. But uh, I'll show you here the figure of eights. Now, the only problem is I find with this nib is that it's because it's an extra fine nib, I get a um, lot of uh, feedback on this nib. And this is one reason why I don't typically go for extra fine nibs, is that not all extra fine nibs will have feedback, but I tend to find a lot of them have, like, there's much more of a chance the finer you go with a nib, the more feedback you get uh, and the more crispness of the nib and I tend to like more of a very smooth running nib uh, or just pencil like feedback so for me like I like this as an extra fine nib would I get another extra fine tubular nib probably not because I tend to like mediums as standard uh, some broads some some stubs uh, and that really is what I tend to gravitate more towards. But sometimes you do need an extra fine nib. So for me, like I'll have, I've got a couple of extra fine nibs in my collection, uh, and I will use them. But I, I won't use them for, say, writing letters or or doing long writing sessions. So in terms of wetness, now this is diamine matted or it's a red ink, and typically they they don't tend to be that wet. Um, so let's have a look here. So it's it's wet enough for an extra fine nib, but not overly wet. Um, but uh, you'll you'll see here that that in terms of being able to flex the nib, you can get some line variation out of it. But um, it is a steel nib, so so chromium eighteen nibs are pretty hard. Um, you you're not gonna feel bounce to them like you would maybe on some 18 or 14 carat gold nibs or even like the 23 carat palladium nibs although you can sometimes get harder nibs for them as well but uh for me i like this nib is it an everyday writer for me no because i for my everyday writers i tend to prefer medium nibs uh, or broad nibs uh and if i'm writing letters more broad nibs to like 1.3 millimeter stubs um but uh, for an occasional writer or if i need to do some small writing or just annotate some of my notes this is a, a pen that i do like to use so if you like extra fine nibs you probably will find this quite nice um but bearing in mind it is a steel nib uh, it's it's not uh, um, a gold nib, so uh, if you want a little bit of variation out of it, you will get that, but only if you push very hard, and uh, you 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 won't get more than double the line variation. So thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next pen video. Bye bye. <laughs>